Welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Minister of Finance and Sustainable Development Camilo Gonzalez is strongly advocating the need for the 2018 Climate Resilience Levy Bill to be implemented. In Parliament recently, Minister Gonzalez pointed out that the three US dollar or eight EC dollar tax per hotel room is aimed at generating income for this country's resilience against natural disasters. He noted that government officials have been in consultation with the SVG Tourism Association and some of its members on the levy, and while they gave it their support, they are, however, in disagreement with the May 1st implementation date. And in consultation with them, we made some modifications to the methodology that we had originally proposed. Um, we and them still have some disagreements about the timing of the, the levy, but as constructed, um, it reflects their suggestions about how we should impose it, which is, is a nightly levy on people who come on, on the room, not the individuals. Um, who stay overnight at hotels in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And it is a $3 US per night charge. And we expect that this measure could generate an additional $1.7 million or so, which we will also place in the contingencies Fund. The finance minister said, contrary to some views, the levy is not burdensome and will generate some $1.7 million when implemented, which will go towards efforts in fighting the effects of climate change. Sometimes they call them environmental levies. Uh, there are other names for them. They are imposed in different ways. Sometimes they are imposed on every individual um, when they when they land at the airport, sometimes they they impose on every individual staying in the hotel room, not not the room itself. Um, there are a variety of application methods, but but we've we've gone with the per night um, eight dollars EC charge on the room. We don't think that this is an overly burdensome imposition, um, but we think that it will go some way to making our contingencies fund more robust. Of course, we hope that we can get a break from the steady drumbeat of natural disasters that we've had to deal with in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we hope that the contingencies fund will have a few years to build up some steam. Minister Gonzalez emphasized that having the funds will ensure that emergency resources are available to give assistance while pledges and donations from overseas agencies are being processed. But the time that it takes for that money to go from a pledge or a promise to actually having it in your hand where you can put back up power lines or build back somebody's homes or clear somebody's road um, and do all the myriad things that you have to do, build back bridges, the time that it takes is critical because in that time period people are in shelters, people are, are out of pocket, uh, people are experiencing tremendous difficulty and it's always good to have some money on hand to deal with that aftermath um, with as little um, international bureaucracy as possible. And it is also important to have those resources on hand well in, well, well in advance of a climate event uh, to be used judiciously and in targeted ways to build resilience. Expressing strong disapproval of the climate resilience levy was opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday, who described it as punishing visitors for staying longer in the country. In his rebuttal in Parliament, the opposition leader and member of Parliament for the Grenadines said more consultation is necessary to finalize the details of the levy, which he said could turn off visitors. Not to be treated, Mr. Speaker, I believe, as the other routine financial bills that we normally come to Parliament and um, approve. I think a matter such as this needs more consultation, more at least time to study the full effect of the bill. Had it been discussed yesterday at the Parliament, you know, it would have been 
really putting the opposition in a very difficult position of having to respond to a fairly substantial bill without any notice. And that is not good democratic um, legislative practice. In any event, Mr. Speaker, overnight I had a chance to look at the bill a bit more carefully. And there are a number of things that came to my attention. First of all, let me say, we have, and the opposition, we have opposed the levy on the basis that imposing a tax of $8 on the tourism industry per night is onerous at this particular time. The opposition leader is also of the view that the timing of the levy is questionable and claimed that the government is just trying to fill the coffers at the expense of hoteliers and visitors. We have, and the opposition, we have opposed the levy on the basis that imposing a tax of $8 on the tourism industry per night is onerous at this particular time. The opposition leader is also of the view that the timing of the levy is questionable and claimed that the government is just trying to fill the coffers at the expense of hoteliers and visitors. And the minister has just said that it's for the levy is imposed on the room. So if there are four persons in the room, you pay $8. But that's not what the act says. That's not what the bill says. So I am correct. Well, that is an important distinction, Mr. Speaker, because there are two things. First of all, the timing of this is bad for the industry. I know I see the occupation rates, how low they are, how difficult they are, especially out of season. So, Mr. Speaker, in my mind, that is a very serious flaw. And no good intention can overcome the way in which this is being implemented. Politicians have a way that they want to be measured by intentions, not by effect. My intentions were good. But if you sink a business, you create hardship on the economy and on, on, on the um, tourism sector, you say, well, it was all for a good cause. So you basically, you, um, you're digging a hole as they say, to fill a hole. There is a growing need to ensure equitable access to HIV AIDS care here in SVG and throughout the region. That's the view of Director of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Coordinating Mechanism, the OECS RCM, Joan Didier, as she delivered remarks at a consultation held earlier today at the Marion House. The event sought to provide an update on the current Global Fund Grant which powers the OECS HIV TB elimination project, as well as to consult with a cross section of stakeholders to generate input and endorsement for the continuation of the grant. DDS said there are instances in the sub region where patients, due to sexual orientation, are discriminated against by healthcare providers, a fact which led to the OECS being selected as a recipient of the Global Fund grant. Equitable access, whether we are physically challenged, whether we are white or black, whether we are from Guyana or from St. Lucia, whether we are a man having sex with a man or a sex worker. We will also have at some point in time to address the whole issue of 16-year-olds being able to access care because in our countries, 13-year-olds are having sex. That's what the data is showing. But if they have an STI, they cannot go to the doctor if a parent or a guardian is not there. So we would not have been part of this had it not been highlighted to the Global Fund that we are highly vulnerable countries. Thanking all stakeholders for their involvement in the project, Didier gave an overview of the areas being targeted under the current grant. The current grant that we have focuses on three areas. Health system strengthening, and that looks to case-based surveillance, labs, and elimination of mother-to-child transmission. 
We are working towards eliminating HIV and TB. We are also working to ensure that we have a more enabling environment, particularly when it concerns key populations. The OECS RCM director further urged all participants to share their knowledge and give their honest response during the day's proceedings. We seek to have this consultation. I'm asking you to be honest, mm -hmm. to talk about the challenges within the framework of the objectives that we are going to present to you. It is not everything that you say that you want that is going to be in the proposal. The proposal is now for three million two hundred US dollars. And your Minister of Health pointed to us yesterday that that's not a lot of money. And it isn't. But when you don't have, a little is a lot. Meantime, Assistant to the Local HIV Secretariat Director and Zonia Van Lo Morris said the continuation of the HIV TB elimination project will aid in ensuring that there is efficient and effective delivery of HIV services, not only in SVG, but across the OECS subregion. Van Lo also highlighted the importance of having a collective approach in addressing the, is the issue of HIV. So that's why here today we have representatives from civil society, we have representatives from government, we have representatives for key populations as well as for persons living with HIV. So here in this room today we have representation from all those persons. The continuation model relies on a strong country dialogue to bring partners together to best decide how to maximize impact with the available resources. So today we're just going to have discussions and presentations and we will be able to move forward with this continuation grant. Project coordinator of the HIV TB elimination project, Dr. Clofus Duvier, thanked all stakeholders for their role in making the project a success. It's basically to provide you with an introduction to the grant itself, um, look at our achievements, our challenges, um, and then have some fruitful discussion as to where do you see the gaps are. And from these gaps, you'd actually make your own recommendations as to what you perceive will be needed in the continuation grant, um, which is a $3.5 million, basically 30% less than the current grant that we have. So we need your input to, for us to know what you want, you know, putting for yourselves, you know, from, 19, from 2019 to 2022. Candidates who receive their CVQ certificates in their chosen field have been challenged to aid in the further development of SVG. Head of the National Qualifications Department, Ken Reichertels, issued this challenge as he spoke at a ceremony today at the New Testament Church of God to celebrate the success of the candidates. Kittel said the stigma associated with technical and vocational education and training, TVET, is slowly being erased as more programs are being made available to a wider cross-section of people. Kittel added that much work has been done to ensure quality of the various programs and congratulated the candidates on their success. The assessors are also awarded for their competencies shown in the CVQ assessment process. And as you would realize, if there are no assessors to ensure that the candidates meet the standard, then we cannot give quality certification. Let me now congratulate all candidates who have been deemed competent in their various vocational fields and who have made the effort to be here this morning. The persons who are here today are not only here to see you receive your certificates or your awards, but also to say to you that they will be looking towards, to forward, to see you put what you have earned into productive activities that would enable you to contribute to the social and economic development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Senior Operations Officer at the Caribbean Dev Development Bank, a supporter of the program, Dr. Martin Batiste, said TVET programs have the same effect as applied science, adding that today's ceremony presented an opportunity to celebrate the importance of all professions. 
the truth is that if Tibet is anything, there is a, a phenomenal body of theory and science that undergirds everything the Tibet student does. Tibet is in fact applied science. If you don't believe me, you certainly would not want your chef not understanding the concept of food science before he or she mixed the ingredients because you would end up by another TV professional, the doctor, if you were to partake of that meal. Everything that you see around you is as a result of TV. And that is why we need to move the discussion further to understand that what you are doing in this project through the Ministry of Education is about celebrating how we can build a society and to celebrate the importance and the value of every profession that exists in the economy and the society. Known to have an impact on all who made contact with him, the Calypso fraternity here in SVG has lost a key player. Described as a giant within the art form, the late Olson Caribbean Pete Peters, affectionately known as PT, passed away last Thursday, April 5th, and is remembered by President of the SVG Calypso Association Incorporated, Earl Cabba Bennett, as an all-rounded individual who remained humble despite his many talents, vast knowledge, and skills. Contributed tremendously and immensely to the art form in St. and the Grenadines. Not only as a college winner, which he won three times, in 1958, 1962, and 1963. He was also a musician of repute and an arranger extraordinaire who arranged for many of our Calypso monarchs and many other persons. He was also an educator and he was head teacher of the Kittes Government School. So he impacted our Vincentian community not only as a musician an arranger, but also, as I said, as an educator. He also had a column, a weekly column in the news newspaper, where he wrote about all things cultural, bringing enough historical facts. He went even as far as the wider Caribbean to keep us abreast. This man's contribution was indeed a stolen contribution, and his passing has left a void, a void that needs to be filled, but it will be difficult Extending his condolences to the family and friend of the late Peters, Bennett took the opportunity to urge all members of the Calypso fraternity to ensure that they honor the legacy left by the late cultural icon. We are the richer for having Pete in our lives, our Caribbean Pete, Mr. Alison Peters, but we are the poor for his passing. And the best tribute I think we can pay to, to, to Mr. Peters, this legendary and iconic figure, is to continue to strive for excellence in whatever we do. To those persons in the Calypso fraternity and the community, I ask to continue to lift our game. So again, on behalf of the same when the Calypso Association, I'd like to extend our deepest condolences to his immediate family, his extended family, the Calypso fraternity, the cultural community, and St. Vincent Grenadines as a, as a whole. We have lost and I can. Managing Director of the News newspaper, Shelley Clark, also expressed sadness over the passing of the late Olson Caribbean Pete Peters, noting that for many years, Peters contributed to the newspaper by writing cultural articles, especially on Calypso. Clark said Peters was able to bring his experience and passion to life through his writing. After all, he, he lived these things. Huh? Um, he was a top musician, Calypso Monarch. I remember seeing him, in fact, winning one of his Calypso Monarch, it might have been Calypso King titles then, um, in the early 60s. And he also arranged for many Calypsonians. And he brought, he brought all of this to his columns in the paper. He even broadened his approach to it to look at the, the entire regional scene of cultural competition. Meantime, in a news release issued on Monday, the Carnival Development Corporation, the CDC, said it joins with the SVG Clips Association Incorporated, the Yulupan Movement, and the Carnival Bands Association 
to extend condolences to the family and friends of Peters, who contributed to the Calypso art form over the last six decades. The CDC said Peters will be remembered and appreciated. As a means of remaining sensitive to the needs of its members, the Police Cooperative Credit Union, the PCCU, has launched a new series of products and services. Given an overview of the new products and services was loan supervisor Ivan Vaughn, who said the union aims to do its utmost to assist members with their financial wants and needs. Our final category is our pre-approved loans, where we, we reward excellent customers by offering them pre-approved credit for any, for any activity that they want to embark on, whether it be about the celebrations, anniversary, graduation celebrations, any, any sort of stuff like that. These are done, as I said, in-house, so as to save the red tape of application forms and all that. So as I recap, the, the five products that we are launching today are our gadget loans, bundle loans, top-up loans, pre-approved loans, and debt consolidation loans. The long-term view of the Police Corporate Credit Union is to be the face of, of your financial needs whenever you, you have such needs arising. Highlighting some of the products presently available at the PCCU was the institution's manager, Ayana Samuel, who said the PCCU is committed to the financial security of its members. For the children, we have our Junior Savers account and also our Challenge account. Our Challenge has been attracting a lot of children over the years, and I'm happy to pronounce that we have extended the deadline to June 30th. So I'm hoping that parents, you'll take note and you'll get your children involved as soon as possible. We have our Survivor's Benefit plan, which is our debt benefit. We also offer scholarships. Presently, we have nine scholarship holders, and it's from the secondary to tertiary level. And finally, we have we offer our members income tax and embassy statement. In closing, please note that we are committed here at the Police Credit Union to serve our members, and as long as our members continue to pull their resources together, we will definitely move towards a sustainable financial future. Meanwhile, PRO Junior Simmons encouraged the public to become members, adding that the institution is not exclusively for police officers. One of our major accomplishments to date at the Police Credit Union is to acquire our own corporate headquarters. This very building that we are in this morning and this building was purchased in 2016, and we're very, very proud of this achievement. At the Police Credit Union, our motto is you don't have to be a police officer to be a member. So anybody can join us. The public can come in at any time and become a member of the Police Credit Union. So too can the members of the media who are here this morning. Because at the Police Credit Union, your money is safe and your future is secured. 